Hello, 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 hello. This is episode number 74 with Truth Be Told Podcast. I'm your host, Britt. And today we got a good one. We have number episode number 74, Tired Don't Get Results by Gerard in the building. How you doing today, Boo Boo? Uh, yeah, I'm feeling amazing. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. How you feeling? I'm feeling amazing too. It's a new week. We got through the first week of 2024. How are you feeling? Are you into new year, new me? Do you have goals? What's, I know you have goals, but how are you feeling by it being what's the day, the 14th day of the uh, of the uh, month? How are you feeling? Listen, I'm just uh, I'm writing down goals. You know, I have like a sheet of paper that I just write down a lot of my goals. Um, staying motivated, staying hungry, and um, and grinding. Try don't get results. Right, right. I love that. I love that. Um, I was gonna say, you know, it's funny because by the time it's the 14th business day or the 14th day of the month, people are usually tapped out. You know, uh, they ain't going to the gym. All them goals that they had, they probably already eating them chips and them burgers and them sodas or whatever it is that we're trying to do. But I just want to encourage everybody to take it one day at a time to be a better person for yourself each and every day. Um, Because that's all we can do, right? Absolutely, yep. One day at a time, but just grind. Grind every day. Right. So, y'all, okay, so I started a new segment. This is my second uh, segment of Kitchen Talk. Kitchen Talk, for me, is just like a flirty, uh, real-life conversation segment where I do focus on mindset, but it's real conversation. You know, we in here, we talking about what we can do to be a better person, but you can be yourself. And so I wanted to show the audience a different side of me, Gerard, because my podcast is about mental health and mindset and healing the inner child but i wanted the audience to see that it's all about balance so yeah so that's why i started kitchen talk because i was like you know what it's a new year and we need to go ahead and um come into this year Uh, of course we're going to be serious about what we're trying to do this year um but we definitely need to come into this year with um being flirty, having fun, but also having that determination, that discipline, and that obedience. And we definitely are going to talk about that a little bit, too. But before I get into all of that, let's talk about Cat Williams a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to Shannon Sharp. Y'all, he has like the number three podcast on um, podcast platforms. He is very smart in bringing Cat Williams to the stage at the beginning of the year. It's funny because one man has really broke the internet already for the year. Like he has gotten over 600 views. I know he's probably at almost a billion um, just off of what Cat Williams is talking about where everything is going on in, um, in the celebrity world. Now my podcast is not focused on social, you know, social pop, what's going on in the celebrity world because I really can't keep up. Uh, my husband is usually the one that tells me everything, Gerard, because he was like, you need to talk about Cat Williams. And I'm like, well, I want to talk about how he pretty much shut down the internet. And I want to talk about how Shannon Sharp was very smart in bringing him on the show. But all the politics in between of the, of the men dressing like women, you know, that's a lot. That's a lot. So when I talk about what's going on with Cat Williams, how do you feel about it just being a black man? Do you feel any way about that? You know, um, when I watched when I watched the uh, the interview that he did, I most of what I really got was <clears throat> he was speaking from a point of holding holding himself accountable or holding who he who he is as a as a comedian as a you know a black individual and not wavering based upon even if it was like hollywood that wanted him to do like a movie a certain way or how he changed the script like in um, uh, friday at the next where he had to like i think he mentioned something about um getting raped in the movie but he he switched it up so i think also, what he talked about is is about putting in the work ethic 
versus people that are just stealing things that he supposedly like done prior. And, it, and, and I like to relate it to like, like being an athlete, right? Because I've, I've done some athletic uh, competitive sports um, and I understand the work ethic that goes into it. Like I've, I've done what's called um, strongman competition. If you ever seen that on TV, from guys like pulling trucks and doing all that craziness. Like I've I've done that for a few years and- Oh, wow. And the, the, those years that I've done that, the work ethic that goes into that, like eating right, training like twice a day. So when Cat Williams is talking about like, I guess, you know, perfecting his craft as a comedian and then other comedians coming about it, coming out of nowhere, Taking some of the jokes that he was saying, then I can understand where he's coming from from that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I love your spin on it. That's what I wanted from it. That exactly what I wanted from it. Cat Williams was standing on business. He's standing on business the whole 2024. It's how I took it and ran with it because he really just, like you said, he told his truth. He stood in his authentic truth. And everybody can't do that, especially when you are in that type of environment or in that type of caliber. I don't know nothing about it, but it's just amazing just to see one man, one show come and do all of that. So I was just amazed at that. I definitely was amazed. Um, but is there anything else that when you think about what he did and how he came on um, Shannon Sharp podcast, is there anything that you take from, or do you feel offended by being a black man? No, no, I, I, I think he just, he's the type of individual so far that I've seen that he doesn't really want to gossip, but I guess it got too far for him. And <laughs> once um, he started pointing out on the podcast, on the interview, certain people that came up, Mm -hmm. That thing, he even called Shane and Sharp out on a few things. Like, hey, when this person said this, you didn't say nothing about it. Mm -hmm. So I, I really would go back to like what you were saying. He's he's standing on business and he's not, you know, joking around. I don't feel offended about about any of it as a, as a black man. Um, you know, some of his uh, some people think some of his comments are are like negative and, and drama full. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, unless you're uh, unless you're in that industry, then it's kind of hard to really say. Right. If you're a comedian, if you are actually in Hollywood, it's kind of hard to say. You know. Right, because we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So okay, I'm out for Cat Williams. I just thought that was something to come and bring into Kitchen Talk, guys. If y'all haven't seen the episode and you're interested, definitely go check out Shannon Sharp's interview with Cat Williams, just to give you a little bit more background about what Cat was talking about and how he's standing on business and he's being his authentic self. I felt like we was just poking a bear. I felt like whenever you poke a bear and you keep poking that bear and then you poke them too damn much and then that's what you got. So <laughs> you, want, you want to get what they say, what did the five fingers say to the face, right? Remember that? <laughs> But yeah, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about Gerard and what you got going on. You know, I love your brand. I love it. Um, and I'm so, so grateful that you took the time to come on the show today and be a part of the podcast. It, I'm just, I'm just honored to have you here. So I just want to say thank you. No, thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure. And, uh, you know, Ty, Ty don't get results. Um, it's a funny, funny story behind it, but but what it means first is it, it, it stands for like pushing yourself beyond your limitations, right? So when you read it or if you have the shirt on, it represents pushing yourself beyond limitations. It could be for <clears throat> that that athlete that's chasing victory. It could be for you know that entrepreneur that's trying to you know, pursue, the, uh, pursuit for their dreams. It could be um, anybody that's just a hustler and just going after what they want. So it was a funny story. A friend of mine, he was on the phone talking and he thought about going to the gym. And 
I kept trying to get her to go to the gym. I'm like, yo, come on, let's 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 do it. Let's go to the gym. And she's like, oh, you know, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. And I was just like, yo, tired don't get results. <laughs> and she she said, you should make that a shirt. <laughs> and at first I thought about it and I was just like, yeah, I don't know. But then, like, after repeating it in my mind a few times, I said, okay, let me go get, like, a test for it. Like, let me go put it on a shirt, see how it looks. And it was over the summer of 2023. And um, I got a lot of feedback from it. And I said, okay, I think this is something. So I bought the machines. I did everything. I started making the shirts myself. Next thing you know, just started spreading. I was like, okay, good. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, man, that's awesome. You can see it, it's good quality. I'm always looking at a, a shirt. You know, I'm I love our community because we're so creative. Uh, we have so many different gifts from God, and sometimes we don't even notice within us. And so I think your friend, whenever you went to the gym, she just sparked something within you that you didn't even know that was there. Y'all was just going to the gym, you know, just getting that workout in and then all of a sudden it's like bam like the slogan says so much when you were making those t-shirts and you were starting your business what were you going through during that time to make you want to be an entrepreneur oh man hey man that's a deep question that's a very deep question because you know in life we all go through stuff right so um <clears throat> During that time, I was going through a breakup, actually. I'm not going to get too deep into that, but, um, you know, I was running. I was, at the time, I'm, I'm running an Airbnb business. So I have properties of Airbnb, and I was running Airbnb businesses and then, you know, going to the gym and finding out, you know, what else can you do? Like, what else can you get going? And then I wanted something that could represent something that everybody would be proud to wear not just something that represents like my last name or something like that i wanted something that when somebody goes to the gym or they wear it they know that they put in their best foot forward they know that they're striving for greatness so um i was just thinking that i was just like okay i gotta figure this out and then once the once the conversation came about i was just like wow you know it's like that light bulb moment you know like, uh -huh. and you know when you get that light bulb moment you know like you can't sleep you up all night you kind of thinking of stuff and that lasts for like a good week i'm just thinking i'm thinking okay how you gonna do this okay now i gotta get the I got the shirts, now I got to get the sweatshirts, now I got to get the hoodies, now I got to get the hat, now I got to get the sweatpants, now I got to, you know, so um, once I came out with it, I, I went ahead and trademarked it, um, and it's been a journey, I love it, you know, so as I'm running, you know, my Airbnb businesses, I'm also getting the orders that uh, people want, and, and I'm just I'm staying busy, so okay. I'm kind of keep away yeah, so I kind of took away from what I was dealing with in my relationship to stay focused on business. Okay. And what have you learned from the breakup? Like, you know, oh. I don't want to, you don't have to tell me all your business, but what have you learned from that? Because heartbreak can do something to us. I know me, I done been through heartbreak. I'm like a little girl. Like everybody pick on me that's around me. I'm crying, I'm sad. You know, but then I had that girl mama where I'm like, let me get dressed, true. Let me go outside. Like, <laughs> let me let me let, let me let him know that I still got it, you know, <laughs> whatever the case may be. But what is it something that you can tell people that are going through a breakup or going through a hard time that you learned from that? Uh you know, to be to be really blunt with it is just that life goes on, right? as much as we you know have moments of like sadness and you feel like you just don't want to do nothing um you know it's okay mm -hmm. right but the, the main goal is is, is uh, how long are you going to stay in that funk right. in that low state right so for me um during that breakup it was it was it was stuff that i did and it was stuff that she did right and um it just came to a, a point where it was just like, all right, this is just not going to work, you know, and um, just had to call it off, regardless of how I felt, 
for how she felt. Just it just wasn't working out. So yeah, I went through it. You know, sometimes um, uh, how can I put this in a good way? African American men, black men don't like to really show that they're going through things. Um, and I end up getting like a therapist for it. Like just you know, it's okay to go through that stuff, but like, how long are you going to? stay in stay in your low and i knew that i couldn't stay in this low i had to like figure stuff out because i'm running a, i'm running another business as well you know i got <laughs> i got airbnb guests that are checking into my properties i gotta make sure that's running smoothly i gotta make sure i'm paying my staff i gotta make sure everything is running smoothly on that especially because my airbnbs are not in the same state that i live in mm -hmm. but now i gotta make sure that 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 operation is running smoothly so um yeah i just learned that i have to just i have to keep pushing and um and just keep keep grinding and and it's okay to have moments of of a reflection if you will and um learn from it pick yourself up keep going because tired don't get results i love that i love how you took what you was going through and you made it a purpose to be better and I love how you're talking about therapy because in the black community, we don't like to go to therapy. Guys and women, like it's 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 like it's shun upon, like we're not supposed to do it, like we sweep it under the rug. I know when I was younger and I used to go to my mom and tell her certain stuff, and I don't blame her for it, but she would always kind of just shoo it off, like everything's gonna be okay, or 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 pretty much I had to kind of snap out of what I was going through and keep moving. So for me, that was hard as an adult because I had so much built up from childhood that I had to learn like, hey, Brittany, you, you messed up a little bit. So let, let's go talk to somebody who can, you know, get these thoughts out and help you figure out why you feel the way you feel or what you're going through and how to come out of that. Because like you said, you can't stay there. You can't stay there. So when I think of tired don't get results i think of motivation i think of motivation i think of um it's a new year new hopes new dreams that's why i started off with cat williams because i'm like the momentum was there is it still there with us did he break the internet are y'all still doing your goals are you still focused are you still tuned into what you're doing um and i was just thinking about like gosh it's so funny how one thing can get you sidetrack and get you off of being motivated to accomplish your goals my question to you is because you know motivation wears off that's why i was like okay y'all we 14 days into january how y'all feeling you know have y'all picked up them bad habits i know i have you know um and i'm okay to say that because i don't make uh new year's resolutions no more i learned that a long time ago i'm still working on me from last year so <laughs> I so you, ain't nobody I about you. to make no New Year's resolutions because I'm still trying to stop doing this and pick up this and be better with this. So what do you do when the motivation wears off and the discipline has to come into play? So, you know, discipline is very key. And, and, and I'm learning from <clears throat> another guy that I follow on social media that he, um, discipline is like, being able to learn patience. And when you're able to learn patience, then you can you can pretty much conquer the world. You can have anything that you want. So like when the motivation goes away, I feel like you just need to remind yourself of why you got started in the first place. Right. So if it's like like right now, right? I go to the gym, boom, the gym is flooded with people, right? It's, it's, it's that new year's resolution. And, and I do just like you. I don't even do New Year's resolutions anymore. My whole thing is just like, how can I be better? Right. Like that's that's just what I think about. So, but every year at the gym, you know, lasts for like a good month or so, and then those new people that signed up for the gym start to slowly fade away because it's like a it's a temporary feeling, mm -hmm. right? It's 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 not going to last for a long time. Your your <clears throat> your goal needs to be strong enough that either you can stay, you can stick with it yourself, knowing how strong that goal is, or you can actually have a, a, a tight circle of accountability 
partners, if you will, or friends that would keep you aligned with the goal. Because we human, we're gonna we gonna like slip and slide, you know, we might not be on the same path right away, but like if you got some people, friends that can hold you accountable, then that makes the process smoother. For me, I've dealt with things like being homeless. I've dealt with, you know, financial hardships. So as much as we don't like to label it, that's trauma. Yes. That's a form of trauma. So for me, if my bank account get below a certain amount of money, it's like something goes off in my mind. And then that's when the hustle really goes on, you know? So it's like you just have to know what what you what is it that you want to achieve. And sometimes you sometimes you could feed off of that trauma that yeah. you have. Because you just you remind yourself, hey, I don't want to go back to this. Like where I live at now compared to where I grew up at, I never want to go back to where I grew up at. So if I feel like that something might come into play that's going to bring me back to where I grew up at. Mm -hmm. mm, something goes off and I got to start doing things, you know, like making extra money, doing something. Right. You no, know? I love it. I love how you, it sounds like you know your why and that your why is big enough to keep fueling you whenever the motivation wears out. And then you have to be disciplined enough to keep doing it every day. Because what people don't realize is it's a lifestyle. It's not something that, oh, I just want to pick up and be interested in for these 30 days. No, you have to practice this each and every day. I know, like, for me, when I started the podcast, for me, it was an outlet. Because I'm very outspoken, Gerard. And so sometimes I would be outspoken in the wrong ways so i was mm -hmm. like let me channel that into my podcast but i really wanted people to understand what i was learning i was learning about mindset and how to heal the inner child and that like it's really that type of thinking out there if you just study it and you want to be better and you want to do good and so it just intrigued me because i started getting around like you said holding myself accountable how has holding yourself accountable with being an entrepreneur and with your business with tired, don't get results in your Airbnb, how has that held you up as um, being successful as you are now? It means not getting everything you want when you want it, right? So it, it could be like, okay, hey, you know, I got money now to go buy Louis Vuitton bags or whatever it is that you want to Chanel, this, that, the third, right? But I learned from a guy <clears throat> um on social media and, and I don't I don't mind sharing his name because yeah his name is his name is Wall Street Trapper. Right. Okay, I know about Wall and, Street. And and I learned and I'm learning about the stock market with, with him, right? And my goal is what the stock market is is when I when I coach people to get into Airbnbs. My number one question that I get is people who say, how can I get the money to get started? I don't have the money to get started, right? Or what people do is they get, um, they open up an LLC to get, you know, business funding and then they, they go that route, which is cool. Nothing wrong with that. My approach that I want to do is, is um, I want to get the money from the market to open up more Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. So that's how I look at it. So I, I learned it from him, and um, you know, he uh, he always he always say instead of buying like the Gucci bags or buying you know Louis Vuitton, how about you buy and own the company? Buy yes, the invest. Invested and own the company, <laughs> and a lot of times, and that and that's what really made me invest more into my brand because you know I had a lot of Nike gear nothing against them right but i just had a lot of big gear on and i was like i'm not getting paid for this right so i said instead of keep buying their gear i'm going to invest in my gear promote myself when you you know that's marketing one-on-one you know you wear your own brand right. you're outside people see you you know you, sometimes i don't even think about it and people are actually watching you and seeing what you have on Sometimes you're going to get people that are bold enough to come up to you and say, hey, 
I like this. Where, I, where can I get this from? So people might want to take pictures with you. It's you just never know, you know. So like, <clears throat> it's just teaching me on how to not get things when I want. Be a little bit more patient and wait for the right opportunity. I love it. I love how the mindset is. I love talking to an intelligent black man. I'm trying to tell you, it does something to me. First of all, it makes me proud. Not trying to say that we are ignorant. It's just that we don't like to have these type of conversations sometimes. So just to be able to speak to somebody who knows his why, who knows how discipline plays a part in him getting his results. Also with the accountability of making sure that you are there and you're there and holding yourself accountable for your brand. And if you say that you're going to put out, um, you know, a thousand uh, wardrobe t-shirts and joggers or whatever that you hold yourself to that, because sometimes us black people, and I don't know why I'm thinking of hair, but I went, I was thinking of <laughs> I got my hair done. We are awful. Like, okay, we'll sit up there and we'll say, you can't be late. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about the ladies now. You can't be late. My hairdresser will tell me I can't be late. Here she comes strolling in. I'm on time. If I'm past 15 minutes, she docking me. I'm going to have to pay her more money. But she's strolling in here 15 minutes late. And then it's like, okay, like, hold yourself accountable to your brand. This is your brand. And you like that. So everybody know you can do hair. But okay, you still have to hold yourself accountable for your brand. And so I love that about you. I love that you understand that as you're going through this journey. Um, what are some things that you've learned as far as like with the pros and cons of being an entrepreneur with tired, don't get results? Is there anything that you could tell us like as far as somebody who wants to be an entrepreneur and, and start their business? There's something Ooh. that, something mm -hmm. I don't want to say negative, but I want to say like the con that you learn in, in regards to that, um, that, that path. So what I would probably say first is like when you, when whatever business that you, um, do start up, you are probably not going to be profitable right away. Right. And you gotta be okay with that. So when I first started my Airbnbs, I wasn't as profitable because I didn't, I didn't learn certain strategies. <clears throat> so it was like, money I was getting was money I was spending on my team and replacing mattresses, re replacing uh, uh, like um, paintings and stuff like that. So you have to understand that your first year or so is going to be your learning phase. So don't rush the process. You have to understand it. Then be a discipline, know what the goal is. Um, and then you're probably going to work a lot more than like a traditional job, you know? So like you'll spend more time working on your business, doing things that you need to do on your business. However, it's more rewarding because I'd rather, I'd rather work 80 hours in my business than to work 40 hours at a nine to five. Yes, I, I agree. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you would appreciate it more like even though like there's there's uh there's been nights that I've like I'm up until like one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning and I'm making shirts because I got orders in. I've had people say, Hey, you know, last minute, like, hey, can I can I get like three shirts? And I'm up at night making them. That's all right. What is it something that you could tell little Gerard, like 14 year old, 15 year old that if you could have said it back then to him, knowing what you know now, what is it something that you could tell him today? Oh man, that Gerard was wouldn't have listened. That Gerard wouldn't have listened. I list that Gerard wouldn't have listened to nobody. Um, that was a phase that I was going through where, like, I just, I, I. Yeah, it goes into mindset because I, right. I took it as like, you know, the whole world was against me. You know, my father passed and I was just angry at the world. So you couldn't tell me nothing. I was getting into a lot of trouble. I was out late. I was, I just, so entrepreneurship was, was nothing because that was not on, on my mind and I wouldn't even listen to myself. But if I could say something to my younger self about it is 
is always to prove them wrong and go with your gut. Yes. <laughs> prove I them love wrong it. And go with your gut. Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, we got something in common. I lost my dad too um in 2000 i believe eight gosh he's been gone for so long yeah. and losing a parent just does something to you you know and it make you look at the world different and my daddy yeah. was like my superman so he was like even though him and mom was divorced he was there like he was very very involved and so you know i'm just i can say i'm proud of you just talking to you seeing like what i've seen on the internet, what I've heard about you. Um, I think that your dad would be proud of you. Um, I think that young black boys, black women, the next Mrs. or whoever you got coming to you, if she ain't already in behind you, um, I think that they are gonna be very proud of the Gerard that you have become because you know where you're going, you know it's all about patience. And I think a lot of us just really need to give ourselves more grace. So, I, I'm working. I'm working on that. I've heard that before. A lot of times. A lot of times we be our own worst critic. We always kind of beat on ourselves and not realizing how far we've come as individuals. Um, and like just the other week, I went back to my old stomping grounds and seen a lot of people that I grew up with. And when they they see my brand, they see what I've done, and um, I've even got inboxes of. Um, my my friends telling me like like wow you've done a lot you know and that's just to show that it could be done it doesn't matter where you come from you could be from the hood it just it, it don't matter it, it really it really goes on what you want to achieve what do you want to accomplish in life and I just knew that I didn't want to stay I didn't want to stay grounded I wanted to be able to continue to be better, which I'm, I'm, it's a work in progress every day. You know, you, you never arrive. So I just knew that I wanted to keep pushing and getting better. And um, I'm just working on myself, you know, like whenever that time comes for that special person to, to, to align with my life, then that's cool. But it's not something that I'm actively pursuing. It's just, yes, yeah, please don't rush. <laughs> like, it's just when it happens and it, it happens, like, you know, I, I, I feel like I just gotta do me, you know, and, right. and it'll happen. Okay. I gotta pick your brain when we off the camera. I know not today, but I'm definitely interested in the Airbnb. That's why I'm just excited to hear that you even have that. Cause I've always wanted to do something with the Airbnb, but I didn't know how to start. And I was following people, you know, on the internet and I've talked to different people, but just to be able to be in, um, you know, have a conversation like I am having with you about, you know, entrepreneurship and Airbnbs and the do's and the don'ts. I definitely am going to pick your brain later because. Yeah, come on. Yeah, that's something up my alley. That's what is it right. something that you could say that you're leaving in 2023 and not bringing into 2024? Ooh. What am I leaving in 2023? So I was, it's like more of what I'm doing more and more in 2024 than 2023. Okay. Which is like meditating. Okay. Which is, um, you know, helping me align like my emotions mm -hmm. um, to not get angry. Mm -hmm. And I probably would say that more just I'm leaving in 2023, like being so angry, um, not communicating as much. I'm leaving all that in 2023, where in 2024, I'm communicating more. Um, I'm not letting things bother me as much. Um, and, and, and just want to have tunnel, tunnel vision. Like, I want to be able to elevate my business more. Like, like this is the year there, there's so much resources that we have access to now that i think it's safe to say that there's no more excuses oh no excuses no excuses and 
uh, the more that I, I, I expose myself to information and tapping into rooms that I thought I could not get into elevates the mindset even more. So like, I tell people all the time, even my friends, I'm, I'm like, look, you gotta tap into this, you gotta tap into this, let's tap in. And a lot of times, like, like I give a, I give a quick scenario, right? The guy Wall Street Chapter that I talked about. Yeah. I love this guy energy, man. I love his energy. And he did something over the summer, which was called stock market in the streets. Mm-hmm. And pretty much he he flew to different cities and taught about the stock market in the streets. Like in the hood, like in areas where he had a pen and a big pad of paper and he was like talking, right? Right. And I told a lot of my friends, like, look, y'all should y'all should tap, I should come out and see this. He's coming to you know, I'm from New York. Okay. I was like, look, he's coming to New York, like. Right? I think I should all like, come out. Like, I really want to talk about how to make money. I don't have any money. I complain about this. I should really tap into this. Mm-hmm. And nobody showed up but me, which was cool. I just knew that that wasn't for them at the time. Right, right. Okay, so I, right. I took myself and I said, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to learn how to do this, how to play this game. And uh, you know, whenever y'all ready, y'all, you know, y'all, y'all can meet me over there. I love it. I love it. Y'all here, Dara, in the building. It's all about tunnel vision in 2024. Y'all tap in. Um, Gerard, tell us where we can find you at on social media. Yeah, you can find me Instagram, Gerard J E R A R D underscore A D. That's Instagram, that's Facebook, that's TikTok, Twitter, all of it is the same thing. J E R A R D underscore A D. Tap in. I got questions about Airbnb. Look, let me know. I can help y'all whatever way I can. I want to support the brand title, get results. I definitely appreciate it. It's, it's on my all my pages. Yes. All right. So before I close out, is there anything else that you would like to say to the audience? Any nuggets you want to drop or any type of encouragement for? For us and for anybody else that's struggling. The only thing I would say is just never, never give up. Um, you know, I know it's easier said than than done, you know, because when you're in the moment, it, it really seems tough. But I've I've been to those places, so just never give up, just continue to keep pushing, keep a keep a tight and accountable um circle because they always say that um the, the five people that you're closest to average out the income that you make. So make sure that you know who you keeping around. If they're not, if they're not really helping you elevate, <clears throat> make more money, become better. Uh, I'm not saying to cut them off, but just know, just understand the type of people that you're going to have in your life. And we are 2024. It's all about elevating. Just imagine where your life would be if you took the next six months to grind, grind it out. Just imagine where your life would be. So that's yes, my life. You're giving me goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Sometimes you got to sometimes you gotta be alone. Sometimes you got to be alone for that to happen. Sometimes some people, you know, might not need to be in your life for you to be able to have that that growth that you need to have. Like, you know, I talked about my breakup. Maybe that really need to happen right. for me to take it to the level that I need to take it to. Who knows? Right. You know? And it's okay. It's definitely okay. I love it. I love all the knowledge and jewels that you have given to the audience today. Y'all, it's all about tunnel vision in 2024. Tired, don't get results. This is episode number 74. We are signing out with Truth Be Told Podcast. Y'all go like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. And go find Gerard and go get his apparel because y'all see he popping. Let's go. (laughs) We are signing out. You have a good evening, Gerard. Thank you. You. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you. Good evening. All right.